Hi, it's Steve. Today is day 24 of my 30 days of video series and water fasting at the same time. Water fast is still going great. Um, no problems today. In fact, my energy was really good this morning. Uh, Rochelle and I decided to go for a walk on the strip, which is just about a 20 minute drive from my house. And uh, that was uh, actually really nice. We were out for about four and a half hours and I just paced myself energy wise and just took some sit down breaks, walked fairly slowly, but there was no real issues. Um, so that was, that was really nice. Um, it was nice to just get outside more and you know go out. It's been pretty cold out today, which is really unusual for this time of year in Vegas. Normally the temperature around now is like in the upper 80s or low 90s or so, but uh, today was like in the 50s, so it was a bit chilly out. And I noticed on this, on this fast, I'm definitely more sensitive to the cold, so it feels like often five or 10 degrees colder than it really is. So when I'm outside and it's like 55 degrees, I'm just like, brr, <laughs> it feels like extra cold. Um, but I, I, that's just a, you know, a bit of an adjustment. And, uh, you know, otherwise still going well. Um, for Conscious Growth Club, I'm really happy uh, with how well that's been going. Uh, we just opened the registrations, um, I think on, I think it was on April 28th. And we're already up to 61 members now, so that's, that's really awesome. And I've only been promoting that so far just to the people on the early access list. So, you know, I haven't even put up a, a link to sign up on my website yet or emailed my main newsletter list about that yet. So I'll probably do that this coming week. Um, and, uh, you know, then we'll probably get an influx of more members when that happens. But it's, uh, it's impressed me just how active the group already is. I mean, just with the 61 members we have, they've already started about 150 discussion threads and posted over 2,000 messages. So these people are just super interactive and that's great because everybody's like really, you know, enthusiastic about the connections and they're just diving in and working on and sharing growth challenges right away. Some people are starting up um, like 30 day challenges and others are just discussing deep issues and, you know, challenges and getting advice from other members. So that's really cool and there's so much enthusiasm um, enthusiasm in the group from all these people connecting with each other, many of whom don't have many friends who are into personal growth, but at least online we can connect and we're getting people from all over the world, from uh, you know India, Israel, many places around Europe, South America, North America, uh, Australia, so it's just like all over the place um, and that's that's really cool to see. Like. A, a really interesting international group of people, but what we all have co in common is that we want to grow and live more consciously and connect and make more friends and have a very purpose-centered life and just improve our lives across the board. And so um, I'm really just excited about the progress there. Uh, today's topic, um, I had kind of thought of one originally I wanted to do, but I thought it was a little bit dull. So I what I really want to talk about is not that complicated a topic, but I think it's one that a lot of people need help with. Because I, what I've seen is a lot of people email me and they tell me they're just confused and like they don't understand what they should do with their lives. They're confused about their, what their life purpose might be. They're confused about their career path. And they're like, what do, you know, what do I do in that situation? And oftentimes I just tell these people, well, I can't really help you when you're confused. It's like, you, you gotta create your own clarity there. That's up to you. It's not. It's, nobody else can give you clarity. I mean, unless you want to be a slave or something. And if you want to be my slave, that's fine. I'll tell you what to do all the time and you can work for me for free. And I've made some, you know, blog posts about that. And one was like an April Fool's post. And I got something like 12 applications that, in the mail because I, I made this joke post about people having to, uh, you know, like physically mail me a letter with a submissive photo of themselves and, um, and like, you know, an explanation of why they wanted to be my personal slave. And I was like, okay, this is a joke post, but like, I still got 12 applications. So, you know, it made it clear to me that some people are just so desperate, they will literally want to enslave themselves for clarity, you know, because it's like, they just want to be told what to do. And okay, if that's you, but if you would rather decide for yourself, then you've got to figure that out for yourself. And you can't just rely on other people to tell you what to do. I mean, that's, that's one of the reasons people get jobs. They hire a boss to tell them what to do. Your boss is really your employee. 
I mean, your, your boss is somebody you hire to make decisions for you a lot of the time. Like, you, if you're not going to decide for yourself what you're going to do with your life, then you're going to end up somebody else's servant or slave or employee. And, you know, ultimately, what's the difference? You've got somebody else telling you what to do. Um, and it's just amazing, you know, how obedient human beings can be when they lack clarity, when they lack the ability to decide for themselves. They will just do, you know, bend over backwards. They'll give away so much value for other people's benefit um, and take so little for themselves because they can't decide for themselves what they want or get themselves to take action on it. Uh, and if, if you're one of those people, you know, go for it. Do, do, you know, do that approach and see how long it lasts for you and see if you like it. And if you realize and you kind of wake up and you say, I can't be one of those people anymore. Um, that's certainly a realization I've had. Um, didn't take me that long being an employee to realize I don't want to do that. <laughs> I'd rather decide for myself. Even though, yes, it is more difficult. You take on more responsibility. You've got to figure all this stuff out. Um, you know, what do you do then when you're not clear about what, what it is you want to do? Well, I would suggest that when you're not sure what you want to do, you identify yourself as an explorer. And that approach has worked wonderfully for me. Whenever I'm not sure about what I want to do next, I just go into explorer mode. I say, I'm exploring. And society has this, um, you know, bit of judgment it may put on you, you know, different friends and family when it seems like you're drifting. But just tell them to fuck off. <laughs> Seriously. Like when they're, when they're like that with you, deliberately, just consciously put yourself in explorer mode. And when you're, you know, going to be in explorer mode, then be fully in explorer mode. And don't apologize to anybody for that. You, you don't need to make excuses or, like, to, you know, give people estimates of when you'll be done with that mode. Just embrace it. And you can dabble around a lot. You can try a lot of different career possibilities. You can try all kinds of little startup ideas and see what appeals to you. Uh, I love traveling when I'm feeling like I need a break from life and I just need to, you know, take a month off or so. I'll go travel for a bit. Um, Another thing I like doing, which really helps me get into explorer mode, is read a lot of different books. So read books in many different fields. Fields that are very unlike um, what you might choose to work in. Because it will broaden your horizons a lot, it'll give you totally different perspectives on things. I mean, some of the best books I read, you know, were about um, ancient Chinese history or the, um, the History of the Mongol Empire. I read just an amazing book about that, and it was just absolutely fascinating how the, the Mongols conquered so much of Asia and how they started up all these different things and, and the way they would um, lay siege to different cities and basically giving people a choice. You can either join our empire or die. <laughs> um, and then they would integrate the technology from each new city they would uh, capture and spread it throughout the empire. And, you know, and you know, creating things like the early postal system where people could communicate. And it was just like such a fascinating thing how they created all these systems. And, you know, it all started with basically the solution to a problem because these Mongol tribes used to just like raid each other and steal each other's stuff and then run away. And, um, you know, the, the, the man who eventually became Genghis Khan, I think his name was uh, Temujin, uh, he... He basically said, you know, screw this. Why do we keep letting them run away? Let's hunt them down and kill them when they attack us. So then they can't keep coming back at us. Um, and, you know, then that started steamrolling into um, just integrating tribes and basically uh, putting them under the same rule instead of having them all fight each other all the time. And uh, Chinese history is, is much the same where you have, you know, these periods where there's like this central um, strong empire and, it, you know, maybe it splinters into like hundreds of different smaller kingdoms and then the smaller kingdoms all fight each other and then they start combining again and, and you know, creating one um, giant empire or maybe a small group of, say, three of them or so. Um, and it's, uh, you know, the, just doing that type of exploration makes you think about life differently. It helps you think about big picture things. It gets you out of thinking at such a low level as an individual and starts helping you see, you know, your place in the world more. And, and just, you know, especially learning about history, studying things like outer space, astronomy, learning about the planets and the galaxy, you know, galaxies and the universe. Um, 
studying philosophy, studying different aspects of spirituality. Uh, there's just, you know, studying technology. Um, there's so many different directions you can go with learning, you know, dive in and learn music or learn, learn a new hobby. And through that process of exploring, you get to know yourself better. You get to learn more about what your strengths are, what's exciting to you, what isn't exciting to you. And feel free to give yourself absolute permission to just make all kinds of mistakes during this time. Don't put so much pressure on yourself to perform. Uh, this is not a performance time. This is a time of gathering new ideas and having new experiences. And so often, clarity just somehow comes out of that chaos. It begins to bubble up. And you know what? If it doesn't bubble up, that's entirely okay, because some of the most interesting people in life, they stay in explorer mode for many years sometimes decades, and generally, they, they tend to love it. <laughs> um, you know, some of the most interesting people I've met have had like 40 more or more different jobs in their lives because they just keep um, changing and shifting and going with the flow of what, what excites them in the moment. And you know what? There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. It can be a grand adventure to live that way. Uh, you know, you might think there's like one thing you have to find is your true passion in life. And... I think for many people, that's BS. Um, you, you know, for me, one of the reasons I chose to um, name my website after myself and make it about personal growth is that I realized my passions are always shifting and changing. They're always moving, and I love to explore and grow and learn. And I didn't want to start a singular type of business that would keep me stuck in just one type of mindset. So. Uh, you know, I learned this lesson from my computer games business because after running that for 10 years, I just felt like I outgrew that. I just didn't want to keep doing that same type of thing over and over again. I still think it would be cool, you know, to work in the computer game industry. I don't have a problem with that. It's very creative. You know, there's a lot of things I still like about it, but I don't want to be limited to just that one thing. I don't want to center my whole life around just making computer games. I want to be able to explore all kinds of other things. So when I was looking to retire from that business and start a new one, you know, I realized I don't want to be a serial entrepreneur and just start one type of business after another after another. I want some kind of vehicle that serves me as an, as an explorer, that serves me well when I'm in like focused work mode where I know what I'm doing and I've got a clear purpose and mission, but also that still serves me and can still generate income for me and fuel my lifestyle when I'm in explorer mode. Even if I want to be in explorer mode for a few years, I want a business that can support me being in that mode. So I realized, you know, what kind of business could I create to, to do that? It would be a business about personal growth, at least that's one option, because I can never outgrow growth. <laughs> so anything I do of an explorer mode can be integrated in, under the umbrella of personal growth. And then I can create value for other people by sharing the lessons and, and things I learn along the way through that process of exploration. So since starting this business, so much of my life has been about exploring, you know, tra uh, traveling, exploring different types of relationship styles, um, just, you know, building different skills, connecting with different people, doing workshops on a wide variety of topics, writing, you know, um, more than a thousand articles, I think about 1,300 articles about all kinds of different topics as I explore them. And so that creates value, of course, for myself by doing the exploration, but also for other people by sharing what I learned along the way. So that's just, you know, one fairly simple business model, um, but it works. And how do you monetize that? There's lots of ways to monetize it. I monetize it with advertising, with affiliate, um, you know, sales, joint venture deals, um, doing workshops, and now, of course, with Conscious Growth Club. And does it monetize well? Yeah, I would say so, you know, given that Conscious Growth Club, you know, 61 sales in about nine days times $2,000 per sale, do the math. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's, it, it can be very lucrative when you do something that you're really passionate about. But that passion doesn't have to be just one thing. You can be passionate about a lot of things. I'm passionate about exploring relationships. I'm passionate about learning new skills and traveling. And, um, you know, I like public speaking. I'm enjoying doing these videos. So, and this is a new thing for me. I haven't been doing hardly any videos. And so just doing this 30 day video thing, I'm passionate about like health and detoxification. So, you know, like 24 days so far with no food. 
Um, that's a hard one to be passionate about, but as a temporary experience, I can do that. Now, if I started a business that was about fasting or about productivity or just about one narrow focus, I'd be bored stiff after two or three years of doing that. You know, I just, I don't want to be this person stuck in some niche where, um, that's like what I'm known as and that's my branding and that's my focus in life. Screw that. You know, it's like, I want to have a much richer life than being stuck in some, you know, tiny little box that I have to be loyal to for the rest of my life. So if you've been falling into that mindset that you've got to pick your one thing and your family's pressuring you to do that, again, just seriously tell them to fuck off. <laughs> um, it works. And, you know, if they come at you again, just tell them to fuck off again. <laughs> and they'll eventually get it that, you know, you're not, to, you're not gonna follow their model. You can follow their model if you think it's going to make you happy. But if, if you're more like me and you have my mindset where you just, you don't wanna be stuck in a box your whole life. Uh, I've never worked in a cubicle. I don't understand how a human being could honestly do that. Uh, you know, why put yourself in a cage? Uh, if you're not the kind of person who could ever find yourself just in a cubicle without being miserable, then don't do that to yourself. You know follow a path of exploration and allow yourself full permission to, to embrace that. Um, and don't let anybody tell you that there's anything wrong with that. You know, if they do, just kick those people out of your life. There's plenty of people out there, uh, like me, who think that, you know, the boxed approach to life is utterly stupid. <laughs> so, you know, like, yeah, that sounds judgmental, but the judgment is really of myself, like the part of me that um, almost succumbed to that. And it's like telling myself my past self was stupid for even considering that approach because of just how ridiculous it is to, you know, to spend your whole precious life in just one tiny little box and, and, and that's all there is to your life and how narrow your focus is going to be. And, you know, there's this idea that if you, if you want to um, become an expert in something, you have to narrow your focus and go deep into that one thing. And that's honestly, you know, there's, there may be some truth to that in some fields, but for the most part, it's nonsense. Um, because some of the greatest experts had the broadest set of skills. You know, take Leonardo da Vinci, who was just a, a genius in so many different fields. You know, mathematics and art and science and, and uh, uh, anatomy and so on. And it's like he had all these different skills skills, botany, um, you know, so many different areas that he was skilled in, and that just broadened his knowledge. And the interesting thing is, is that when you study many different fields, you'll make all kinds of different connections in how, in how reality works and how things work. Um, you know, one of, the, one of the reasons I've succeeded well in personal development is that I, I don't necessarily run my business the way other people in the field do. I, I bring in so much outside knowledge, like I rely on my programming skills or my, my understanding of technology um, or social skills. You know, um, I integrate so many different things into the way, the way I work, and I like that. I like that I'm just as comfortable um, spending days you know, writing my own PHP plugin for WordPress as I am going, giving a talk. Um, like next month, I'll be giving a talk um, at the Health Healing Happiness uh, Conference here in Las Vegas. And so I, I like, you know, being able to um, explore all these different variety of skills because you never know how they're going to combine together. Steve Jobs said in his, I think it was 2000, his 2005 Stanford, Stanford commencement address that you, you can never connect the dots um, looking forward. In other words, you might explore all these different skills, but you won't see how they add up when you try to project them in the future. It's only when you're in the future and you're looking back on the past that you go, ah, that's how all these dots connect. For, uh, for instance, Steve Jobs, um, when he was going to college, he sat in on a calligraphy class. And, you know, he wasn't thinking that it would be that useful, but it turned out to be very useful when he was creating the original fonts for the, the Macintosh. Um, and if he hadn't sat in that class, you know, the Macintosh might not have had all these different fonts. So you never know, you know, it's, it's really interesting, all these different skills you might learn 
and you don't know how they're going to combine in the future. But if you create a really broad base of different knowledge and skills and experiences and adventures, they can add up to something pretty profound down the road. And you might be relying on skills that you've, you never realized how important they are. Um, and sometimes it's really odd how, how your skills come together. As an example, in, back in 2006, I did a 30-day trial of studying chess. And I just thought that was kind of going to be a bit of a throwaway experiment. In fact, I've never played chess again since 2006. Uh, it wasn't really a passion of mine. I thought I found I was decently good at it for the level of skill I had and the level of experience I had, but um, I didn't really want to progress with it because I just don't care that much about chess. But what I learned about chess, this idea of you know the different phases of the game, the early game, the the mid game and the end game and how you use different strategies at each point of the game and then there's different things you're thinking about early on in the game like you're not trying to go for checkmate right away you're trying to set up the pieces to give yourself an advantage and then the middle game has its own set of strategies and the end game now you're trying to get you know get to the checkmate uh, and I thought oh, it's interesting how like you have this game which seems like one unified whole but you break it up into these different phases and I realized that could apply really well to aspects of personal development. And so I actually started using this chess-based model to tackle certain personal development challenges. For example, when you want to change a habit um, or you want to start a new 30-day trial. A big mistake people make is they just dive right into the 30-day trial and they fail. They give up after like a day or two or three. And why? Because they didn't do their early game right. And the early game is preparation. It's setting up all the pieces. Uh, so, you know, for, for instance, like things like water fasting, the early game would be preparing, educating yourself. The first time I did a water fast, I just dove right in. I only lasted two and a half days. I didn't know what to expect. And it got really hard. I got hungry. And so I gave up. That was just like my old approach. But with this chess-based model, then I think early game. I need to prepare. I need to do the, you know, the first part before I even start going for a checkmate, which is like to do the 30-day trial. And that meant like educating myself on what a water fast is like and watching videos by other people doing fasting and reading websites about it and preparing myself mentally for it and understanding. And when I did that, you know, the first time last year, I went 17 days and I only stopped because I had to leave on a flight to London a few days later. And so I gave myself the bare minimum of time to get off the fast. Otherwise, I think I could have kept going. And, you know, with this fast, I'm on day 24, as I said, and I'm, I I'm doing fine still. And why? Because I use this chess-based model to, to tackle it. Um, so that's, you know, that's something like you don't expect how you're going to be able to cross-pollinate knowledge from one field to another, but that happens all the time when you broaden your knowledge. You know, it's, it's weird how I might draw upon things from like Chinese history or some kind of strange philosophy that I've never encountered you know, b before, and somehow I'm able to apply the knowledge from that that kind of perspective or some type of strategy or tactic or technique to some really practical personal growth challenge. But you don't see it at the time. Like when I was learning chess, I did not think I'd be applying that to water fasting. So, um, you know, there are so many benefits to broadening your base and exploring in many different directions. And a, a tremendous amount of clarity comes from that over time, but also just a tremendous base of knowledge and skills you can draw upon, which makes you more capable. And one of the ways this gives you clarity is because when you gain new knowledge, new skills and capability, your mind starts creating connections where it wasn't creating connections before. And it begins adding up things in, and you start seeing a picture of what you could actually do and accomplish when you, you know, before we're just drawing a blank. Um, I mean, things like my you know, going into like uh, creating something like Conscious Growth Club. I mean, there's so many different little skills and pieces from my past that go into creating something like that. And I, had, I hadn't seen how that was all going to play out. You know, it has to do with like programming skills and tech skills and um, my many years of experience running uh, discussion forums, both in my computer games business and um, for five years in my current business from 2006 to 2011. And, and, you know, like the experience of managing a community, um, you know, creating, um, creating content, like just creating so much content over the years and, you know, blogging, 
Um, you know, now with this um, practice getting into video, um, and just so many little pieces coming together to be able to create the big picture here. Um, you know, doing workshops, of course, was certainly great preparation for creating longer form content, like three-day workshops, which is like a skill set that transfers over to creating online courses. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's like that goal becomes accessible. It becomes a goal that my mind finally can set because now it sees, you know what, we have all the pieces for this. Why don't we do this project? And I was like, oh yeah, that could work. You know, I actually could do, a, do that. I have the skill set now. I maybe didn't several years ago, but now all the pieces are in place. Uh, and that, you know, that is something where um, your combined knowledge and skills can give birth to wonderful bursts of clarity about what is the big thing you should do next. So this is just kind of like a, you know, a, a big overview of, of how to get clarity and, and, you know, to do it through exploration. So see that exploration phase as extremely valid and extremely important and not something to be just dismissed or hand waved, hand -waved over as, as your, you know, your drifting phase. Um, and again, if other people judge, you know, judge you, you know what to say to them. So, so just like, you know, embrace that phase. It re really can be an important phase. And if you need to scramble to do something on the side to generate income to fund that phase, then do that. Um, but just do the bare minimums, you know, to get by financially when you're in exploration fit mode. So you can really put a serious effort into it because you're going to learn so much and you're going to grow so much uh, from that phase. It really is a critical part of your personal growth journey. So don't overlook it. You know, don't just like shove it by the wayside because society's telling you you need to pick your one thing. You know, just say no to that. And if you, if you feel like in your heart it's really time to go and explore and you just need to have new experiences and find your clarity through action, then do that. I'll see you tomorrow.